Greetings, Tom Earl here. And Yusef Trishani. Yes, indeed. And where are we at? At the Earth Focus Environmental Film Festival at Paramount Studios. Yes, indeed. Yusef has the hookup. Got us here to see, before it's even released, the sequel to An Inconvenient Truth. I think it's called An Inconvenient Sequel, right? Pretty easy to remember the name. Yeah. yeah. So we're about to check it out. As you can see from some of the images you're seeing right now, it's, it's a nice little screening. So. We'll let you know what we think when we get out. All right, so later. Peace. Ah. All right, we're walking in. Here we go. Here we go. You can see it behind us. Boom. Yeah. Okay, so uh, we just saw it. What are your initial thoughts? It's profound. Um, it was great to see where we've come and the optimism that we can feel about climate change and the costs of solar and other renewable energies dropping significantly enough to make it something that can happen even in the developing world. And watching that Al Gore and the others at 2015 Paris Accord get the entire world to get behind it and how difficult that was. Um, when we have one crazy guy who really doesn't represent us in this country pull out and watch the rest of the nation and the world double down on climate change, that, that, that makes me feel, feel empowered. And I, I also do feel the small little piece that we all can do to convince people around us to use less carbon or be mindful of it when we make our decisions for transport or what we do. Um, I'm happy to say at our house last year, we last year, last month, we installed solar panels. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. We just went solar last month. Hey! Yeah. So your electricity in your house is solar? Yes. Oh. Yep. yep. So our, our, our energy bill has dropped from somewhere between 80 to 100 a month to 2 to $5 a tax. No! And, uh, and now we pay that cost in, for the panels that will permanently be there, but more so to feel like I'm using that much less carbon. That's awesome. Making impact. It's one small, one small thing. I think for me, my reaction is that climate change, like many human rights issues, your uh, relationship to privilege and how it affects you really is going to determine your passion for this topic. And for so many of us, we have the choice to opt out. So even here in Los Angeles, where like traffic galore, we just got done with the drought. Um, even at that same time, the drought didn't affect me that much. I still had running water. I have a pool in my backyard. I have shower, any temperature I want. So it's so easy to look away, especially because it's so painful to think about if what they're saying is true, we could be headed towards uh, catastrophic, irreversible damage. And I think that's why so many people are in want to disbelieve that there's not climate change because to believe that that much pain is coming and it's because of our doing i think it's for so many people because it have to change the whole way we look at our lives and our lifestyle easier to ignore it but i from seeing this opened my eyes to the storms how it's all related all the dots were really connected for me in this that because with any sort of human rights issue, when we have privilege, we have to choose to be uncomfortable by making that decision. Mm -hmm. And so I guess this has renewed my decision to get uncomfortable by surrounding myself with the reminder of what not only my actions, but the systemic life that I support has on our environment and uh, invest in, like you have, creating a better world and different climate decisions that we make as uh, a people. And I want to take the word uncomfortable and just give a slight modification to yeah. inconvenience. Hey, be inconvenient. <laughs> so hashtag be inconvenient. Yes, and Be inconvenient. And even myself thinking of some of the changes that I want to do, it takes a little bit of inconveniencing yourself. Yeah. Right? We could just continue the status quo and just use energy bill as it is, but we spent months researching solar and looking up what the different ones are, had all these different bids come in. And initially there might be an upfront increase in cost, but again, I have privilege to be able to do that. But there's the being inconvenient of, rather than just having easy conversations, having these tough conversations with our friends, with our family, um, because being inconvenient sometimes is necessary yeah. to be able to stand up against the face of 
as, as you alluded to, um, civil rights or human rights issues. Yeah. People, usually those issues, if people aren't aware of them or in denial of them, it's inconvenient to them yeah. to bring those things up and uncomfortable yeah. um, for those things. So it's important that we speak truth to power, yeah. that we have, you know, we're given truth, we're given knowledge, and we're going to be judged by what we do with that knowledge. And I feel personally that I have the privilege of not only wealth or living in this country, but the, the privilege of knowledge, yeah. the privilege of knowing right between wrong yeah. in so many different ways. And if I'm not acting on it on a daily basis, then that's on me. Yeah. And I think uh, when I was work doing different work with um, tr around genocide and stuff, mm -hmm. there was a saying we learned from first persons, indigenous people in this land mm -hmm. that says plan seven generations ahead. Yeah. And so we really got to play that long game of it might be inconvenient for us, but if we're really planning seven generations ahead, yeah. then it should be a no brainer. Sure. The choice should be should be simple. Yeah. So, so see the movie. Yes. Be inconvenient. The inconvenient sequel. Speak truth to power. Peace and blessings.